I finally know what the problem with the Spartan Fours is. It's taken a while, I'll admit. Nine years, all told, given that Halo 4 released in 2012. But after the numerous occasions I've spoken about the Spartan Fours and the numerous debates I've gotten into and the numerous conversations for and against the Spartan Fours I've witnessed, I have finally boiled down the issues with the Spartan Fours to a single point of contention. But in order to justify the reasoning, we need to take a look at all of the Spartans overall. And at my own comments surrounding the Fours that I've spoken about in the past, and amend them. I'm never against changing my opinions if new information comes to light, or a new perspective is granted to me. This is one of those occasions. Hey everyone, welcome back to Installation 00. Just a quick bit of news before we get started. In case you're unaware, I've been building some pretty cool Halo themed merchandise for quite a while for my patrons. Well, I have posted all of their perks, and if they haven't received them yet, they will do in due course. New perks are coming online for the patrons, which is another great reason to jump aboard, so you can stay ahead of the curve and see this stuff being made behind the scenes. But that means there are now some Halo themed merch just sitting there. So I've opened a web store over at installation00.co.uk. There you can purchase the only medical vial containing a Flood Spore, a Needler Subanese Crystal, a battle damaged Mjolnir Mark IV Battle Plate, or the Mjolnir Power Supply Control Unit Power Bank to charge up your devices with a little piece of Mjolnir Powered Assault Armor. All of these items are available now and are shipped globally. You'll also find links to my merch store where you can pick up yourself an Installation 00 and Halo themed apparel, as well as find various links to my various dwellings here on the internet. Oh, and a little easter egg of sorts, the main entrance screen with my animated logo. It's a video that plays my outro music on loop, for those of you who are into that. Be sure to hop over there and take a look at what Installation 00 has in its archives. The link is down below and you'll also find a link to a GoFundMe page because I'm attempting to build a real working suit of Mjolnir, so take a look at that as well. There are loads of things lined up and loads of updates on the way, so be sure to hit the subscribe button and ring the bell so you're the first to know about any awesomeness I have planned. Now, back to the video. A while ago, I made a couple of videos that had a mixed reception. One was called Spartan 4 Reputation, and the other was called Spartan 4s Are a Liability. Both of these videos explored the Spartan 4s, how they were presented to us in the first instance, and what ultimately led myself and many of you to believe that they are not Spartans. They do not represent the ideals that Spartans are supposed to exude. Poor choices on the battlefield, misconduct, disrespect, ignorance of the chain of command, conversation on their sexual conquests, fraternization, arrogance, to name a few. Well, let's get some perspective and look at the Orion candidates, otherwise known as the Spartan Ones, to start with. The Orion program was the first super soldier program undertaken by the UNSC and the Office of Naval Intelligence. Much of the specifics of the program, including many of the augmentations, are still highly classified and utterly unknown in the mainline law. These soldiers were recruited from all corners of the UNSC, and were fully grown consenting adults when they entered into the program, a condition that would not be returned to until the Spartan Falls. These soldiers were disciplined, capable soldiers, the most prominent of which being Sergeant Johnson, who himself was a war hero in practically every sense he could be. 
there really isn't a whole lot more to say about the Orions, or the Spartan Ones, that Sergeant Johnson's reputation doesn't already fully perpetuate. With the Spartan Twos and the Spartan Threes, however, something shifted to what I have come to call the birth of the superhero. This is where a big difference comes in that changes the fundamentals of the argument. A hero is defined as a person who is admired for their courage, outstanding achievements, or noble qualities. We can say without a shadow of doubt that Johnson meets this definition, as does large swathes of other human soldiers in the UNSC and in real life. Heroes are tangible, they're among us, and anyone can be a hero if the situation calls for it and the person musters the courage to stand up in the face of adversity. Heroes is what we should all strive to be in any capacity that we're capable of. The Spartan Twos and the Spartan Threes, however, do not meet this definition. They surpass it. The Orions, or the Spartan Ones, were normal soldiers, with, in some limited capacity, superhuman abilities, but they still wore their UNSC uniform. They still fit in as a member of society, and still filled all our conventional expectations of what a normal human being is. This is a very difficult expectation to sufficiently fill with the Spartan Twos and Threes. They were the coming of the superheroes. These warriors were trained from six years old, and in some cases, even younger. They were fully immersed in the UNSC's military doctrine. As a consequence, they didn't develop the normal social interactions, ways of talking, interacting and engaging in general human existence. They were instead moulded into the perfect soldiers. As a group, when compared to any other group of humans, they are stoic hard to relate to, difficult to understand their motivations, and operate on a level that even Special Forces soldiers would struggle to pace up to. This serves to alienate them from the general population and makes them very separate to the rest of humanity, a breed of human distinct from humanity as a whole. On top of this, the Spartans were heavily augmented. The result, on average, was a human being nearly seven feet tall, weighing double the average, immensely strong beyond all previous demonstrated feats of strength by even the strongest men in existence, past or present, and impossibly fast to the point of appearing near preemptive. They could see in near perpetual darkness and operate on a level so far beyond other humans, it's a struggle to even define them as such. Spartans more conveniently fit within the definition of a superhero, or even our mythical identifications of a god. A superhero is defined as a benevolent character with superhuman powers. The Spartans are conceived as the perfect super soldiers, but more than that, they are supposed to be the idealistic superhero. Our conventional interpretation of a superhero is a stoic individual, burdened with immense power and ability, a somewhat tortured soul, who uses their experiences as ammunition to safeguard others from experiencing the same things they did. Superheroes are monsters, they're capable of horrific acts of violence above and beyond what any normal person is capable of, but have a moral and ethical code that prevents them from using this immense power against the innocent. They're powerful beyond measure, but have their power under control, and only ever aim it to those who deserve it, and intend to see harm done to the innocent, whom the superhero is sworn to protect. The superhero also integrates their ideals, their power, and their morals into a unified form, with a superhero uniform and a superhero name. This is echoed with the Spartans in practically every way. The Spartans are capable of horrific acts of violence above and beyond what any normal person is capable of, just as John was able to mortally wound, incapacitate and kill fully grown ODSTs, only 14 years old, days after augmentation, 
and yet he has since only used his immense power to protect humanity, ergo a moral and ethical code that Spartans are bound by. The Spartans are powerful beyond measure and use their immense power against alien aggressors, arguably the supervillains in this analogy, who want to see humanity extinguished but that the Spartans will not allow to happen. The Spartans have integrated their ideals, their power and their morals into a unified form. The very armour they wear not only enhances their already incredible power but also exudes this superhero persona. When a Spartan appears, it fills those around them with awe and confidence. It gives them a morale boost, fills them with hope, and they are seldom ever known by name but instead by their alias. It's never John 117 who strides onto the battlefield, it's the Master Chief. You'll never hear a Marine shout, hey look, it's John. It's never Fred, or Linda, or Kelly, or Grace, or Kurt, or George, or Tom, or Lucy, Olivia, June, Kat, Carter, Emil, Dante, Ash, Holly, or Jay. It's always Spartan. The Spartans epitomise these ideals to such a degree that we don't view them as human, nor do we even view them as super soldiers, but more as superheroes, and as such, we hold them to a different esteem. Spartans are superheroes. They're better than humans in every way. They're idyllic, they're larger than life, they're superheroes. This is where the problem of the Spartan Fours arises. The Spartan Fours are fully grown, consenting adults, given augmentations to make them superhuman and outfitted with Mjolnir powered assault armour. It's the equivalent of giving everyone a serum to give them all of the same powers as Superman, putting them all in Superman's suit and cape, and expecting us to treat the original Superman like he's special, different or unique. You've taken normal humans with all of the failings, all of our shortcomings, all of our beautiful imperfections, then making us tall and as powerful as Spartans, giving us the same incredible suits of armour and calling us the same name, but in this case, it works the opposite way. Rather than us looking at the Spartan 2s and the 3s like they're the same as everyone else, we look at the Spartan 4s see their inescapably human quality shining through the stoic, idyllic persona we've created for the earlier Spartans, and realise they're nowhere close to the superheroes we've come to expect. The Spartan Fours do not fit into this same atypical characterization as the earlier Spartans, as superheroes. They are soldiers who have been given superhuman ability, so while they are more officially super soldiers, because they are named after the earlier classes that we epitomise as superheroes, they fall short of expectation. That's nothing against them, they're still incredible soldiers, and given the opportunity I doubt anyone here would pass up the opportunity to become one, as even out of armour you'd be utterly unmatched. But due to our romanticised superhero persona that we've superimposed onto the Spartan 2s and Spartan 3s, the Spartan 4s will never be enough. They're Spartans, they're meant to be superheroes, they're meant to do everything that superheroes can do, they're meant to fit the characterization of a superhero, they're meant to be Spartans. And while we see superhero qualities like unmatched speed and strength, being so much taller than average, wearing incredible power armour, being called Spartans, we also see them joking amongst themselves. We see them being human, being imperfect, being flawed. When we expect flawlessness and perfection, from our superheroes. When pushed, it seems the majority of people think the Spartan 4s are crap compared to the Spartan 2s and 3s, but the Spartan 4s are incredible. 
and they are excellent super soldiers. There is literally no argument there whatsoever. The problem is our super imposition of superhero ideals onto a normal human. A superhuman, but a human nonetheless. And we know as humans, we are fundamentally flawed and thus aren't always compatible with the superhero persona. The issue with the Spartan Fours is not the Spartan Fours. The issue is us.